What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of The Real Impact. Today, we've got a really good one lined up for you guys today. Real estate and crypto together. So let's dive in. One, two, three, four. All right, here, Mr. Paul Sparks. Paul, what's going on, man? What's up, awesome? Not much, man. Glad to have you on, man. So, uh, for everybody listening that you know may not know, you know who you are, just kind of give a little uh, a little background about you know who you are, what you guys do, and then we'll dive into it. Sure. We met in uh, Collective Genius. So I'm a real estate investor here in Denver, Colorado. Um, formerly was a was an engineer and worked in corporate sales for ten years with companies like Amazon, Walmart. So I had a you know a long history of selling innovation and technology and different things like this to some of the largest companies in the world. And so um, got into real estate, started buying a bunch of rentals, decided to kind of use my sales skills to, to buy some off market deals. That's what I thought was, uh, you know, the, the best thing to do with my skill set. We probably do, you know, two, three, four deals a month here in Denver, nothing, nothing crazy volume, but we focus on, doing some larger developments, things like that. And then um, doing some wholesaling, some novation, some different you know, strategies like that. But found myself into the, the crypto space really because in my first year in business, like a lot of us business owners, we have these really lumpy sales, you know, it's mm -hmm. like we we'll get a lot of, you know, cash flow and it's like a month or two of just drought, nothing. Yeah. It just sucks. Um, so I found a really cool way to use crypto as a passive income generating tool. Most people approach crypto kind of like gambling. I mean, that's how that's how everybody sees it. Right. A lot of people, too. Yeah, exactly. So I figured out how to do something, uh, build something that I call a business treasury. I learned from some some mentors. Uh, these are guys that are partnered with me in this new project we're working on in the blockchain space. But they showed me how to use crypto in a way same way we would do rentals in real estate we're doing the same strategy in the in the crypto world and uh you know so from that i was able to show a bunch actually a bunch of guys in cg that's how this got all got started it was like hey i know how to do this thing let me just show you <laughs> do this yeah you know that started in march and it snowballed into about 70 real estate investors about 80 crypto investors we got 100 actually it's 170 uh plus i just checked before i got on here folks that are kind of working on this world of bridging real estate and blockchain together. And that's where most of my time is, is spent these days is, you know, two sides of the coin, you got the real estate side and then, you know, the blockchain side and try to bring those two worlds together. Yeah, no, I think that's huge, man. Cause I think, like you said, right. A lot of people look at the, a lot of people look at real estate, right. as like the, the tried and true asset. Like it's a solid investment. Uh, if you know what you're doing, right. Um, and you know, you're, there's always depreciation, appreciation, like there's so many different benefits. Right. But like you said, like with crypto and I'm one of those people, right. With crypto, it's more so like it's unpredictable, right. You don't really know what's going on. You don't know, you know, what it relies on, you know, what, you know, there's people that do, right. But obviously to like your, your common investor or, you know, anybody who's in real estate, right. Um, trying to go from real estate to crypto is scary. Oh yeah. Big time. You know? Well, the biggest problem is the language barrier. Mm -hmm. uh, we're the problem with people that are in crypto right now is most of them are. It, well, um, we study something we call the diffusion of innovation curve, which means that as technology moves throughout the the population, it follows a very similar curve. You know, we're talking about you know people that are in blockchain now are the truly the innovators and the early adopters. And so they have a tendency to really understand the technology at a high level and mm -hmm. use a bunch of words that just confuse most of us. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's the big problem right now that we're trying to address is this language barrier, because it just sounds like you're speaking a foreign language to most people. Yeah, a lot of times you, know, you start talking about ERCs and talking about all that stuff like that. And for most people, like you said, it just goes kind of straight over their head. Um, before we dive into the crypto more, right? Um, so on your Instagram, one of the things I noticed that you guys do a lot up in Denver, you call them pop tops. What the hell is that? Because I like we're we're in Florida, right? And I've never heard anybody talk about pop tops. Yeah. Um, 
but I see you guys doing a bunch of them. So like, what, what is a, this is for the real estate guys, right? What yeah. is a pop top? So we have some areas of Denver that are more premier neighborhoods and a lot of people are coming in and they're just buying these lots and scraping them and building, you know, white box mansions. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we found this little niche where we, we can go into these premier neighborhoods. They've got brick ranches and, you know, we're talking maybe a thousand, 1200 square foot uh, mm -hmm. on the main floor. The basement, however, when they built these back in the 50s and 60s, they built them with these really low you know, ceiling, like six and a half foot. And it's just not it's not exactly usable space. Right. Um, so, again, what most people are doing is they're just scraping them. What we found is this, this interesting niche where we can pay more than a developer would pay, but take on a project that a fix and flipper would never touch. What we're doing is we're taking the roof off the house we're popping the top and building a third floor and we're digging the basement down a good two two and a half feet so we've got a you know eight and a half foot nine foot ceiling in the basement making it significantly more usable right and we can really push the value in, in homes like that yeah so you're, you're basically just taking an existing ranch style house and just making it a three-story exactly yeah it sounds simple when you say it like that <laughs> No, I know there's a lot that goes into it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I just saw, I saw that I was looking through and I was like, damn, what is that? Cause mm -hmm. I noticed that, you know, it, you had the top, right? Like you were saying the roof was completely off the house. So I was like, all right, I, I have an idea, but I wanted to ask. Cause uh, you know, I think a lot of people look at projects in different ways. I think it's awesome, man. Like um, I've never heard that done. So that's, you know, kudos for that. That's awesome. Yeah. It's all, it's all, I, <laughs> I don't know anything about construction. In fact, that's why we don't, <laughs> why we don't do many fix and flips because I'm just terrible at it. Um, you know, and I was fortunate as you start getting into these higher value developments, that's basically what it is, right? It's, it's yeah. like halfway between a fix and flip and a development. And it basically is a development. But I found as you get further up into those types of deals, the caliber of contractor and the caliber of investor goes up as well. And right. so I just prefer to play in that space. You know, the fix and flip yeah. game, the way I invest is what I call a barbell. And so meaning on, I either want on one side, I want it to be extremely reliable, very low risk. On the other side, if I'm going to do a construction project, I want it to have a lot of upside. Right. Yeah. There's got to be enough upside to take on the risk of doing it. Right. And so fix and flips for me, they could go well. And, you know, I... I'm staring down a six figure loss right now on a, on a fix and flip. Right. And it's just some, and we've done really well on some of them, but we've done really terribly on others. And I'm like, it's not reliable and it doesn't present massive upside. Just get it out of here until we can get better <laughs> at those types of deals. We're not going to do them anymore. Yeah, no, that makes sense, man. That definitely makes sense. All right. So now we'll, now we'll dive into the, the biggest topic, right? So you guys are really creating a way, right. To merge, real estate and crypto. Right. So like, what was the thought process there? Because obviously there was a lot and it's probably too much to, to, you know, pack into an hour, but you know, in a brief kind of, what was the thought process there of trying to tie the two together? So there's really two things I want to talk about today. The first is the opportunity to earn passive income with crypto, the same way we are with real estate. Mm-hmm. The second opportunity I want to talk about is called real estate tokenization. I think that's more of what you're referring to. Right. Yep. But I want to come, I want to explain first how this started. And it started through passive income. It started because I had a problem in my business I needed to solve, mm -hmm. which was just cash flow. I didn't have consistent cash flow. And so I was fortunate enough to meet a gentleman who, in uh, his name's Dan. And Dan in the late 90s, was a uh, involved with writing a lot of the accounting standards that we use to this day. He runs one of the top accounting firms for crypto and uh, in real estate. Mm -hmm. And he sort of taught me this concept of what we call a business treasury. And what he helped uh, Microsoft and companies like them specifically do in the early 2000s is no build what they call a no big deal. Right? Yeah. <laughs> he showed, he helped Microsoft develop their business treasury. 
And, and let me define what that means. It means yeah. Microsoft's got about $200 billion in assets that they manage uh, as far as their investable portfolio. They're not taking that money and sticking it in Chase Bank. Uh -huh. Right. What you find at the highest level in all these Fortune 500 companies is that they all have their operating business, but they also behave as a bank. They mm -hmm. have and act like a bank. And what that means is they're taking their money and they're using it to lend out. They can borrow against it. It's earning cash flow. It's an actual asset for the company, not cash sitting in the bank account. Right. Mm -hmm. So what he showed me how to do is do the exact same thing that all these fortune 500 companies are doing, but do it from a small business perspective. Okay. How do we help small businesses behave like a bank, use the cash that's on hand that's sitting in their bank account, retained earnings and use it to create cash flow. And what he showed me how to do is use crypto to essentially create a business treasury that paid all of my operating expenses and employee salaries. That's huge. Yeah. So that's what I was able to do earlier this year was create this business treasury that kicked out enough cash flow so that my business operated at net zero. That's massive. Yeah. Because now any any revenue bring coming in is profit, essentially. Right. right. Yeah. And so it takes the downside away and it gives you tremendous amount of upside. So like we don't really have to do a deal. It's mm -hmm. nice to do deals because that's how we make money. But like right. <laughs> the treasury is there to support the business as an asset in the same way that Microsoft behaves like a bank. We can also learn how to do that as well. Right. So that was the first application was like I solved that problem for myself. Mm -hmm. I found out how to use crypto to do this. It's through a process we call yield farming. I'm not going to go down. If you guys, yeah, I was about to say, there's, there's probably so many different rabbit holes you can kind of dive into with that. But and so we'll keep it high level. Just, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you how to find more information about this at the end if you're so inclined. Um, but basically, I was able to do this, and then I was able to, you know, and starting in March, I presented on it in CG in January, and I won the belt. The title mm -hmm. of my presentation was how I built a business treasury using crypto that pays all my operating expenses and employee salaries. And everybody was like, what did you just say? Right. Yeah. <laughs> what is this guy talking about? <laughs> yeah. So then I took 10 people through uh, about a four or five week process where I just showed how to do this. Here's how I'm doing it. Um, and like I said, that's evolved significantly from there. And, and because we've been able to attract so many real estate investors, and so many crypto investors, what we what I then started realizing is like, oh, we've got a much bigger opportunity here. Right. Of course, we can show real estate investors right off the bat how to start earning cash flow for their businesses so that they don't have to be stressed and anxious about whether I have to do a deal and can I make my payroll? Can I do all these things? Well, let's teach you how to behave like a bank so we get that anxiety level down. Right. So that we can then start creating the future leaders in this massive land grab that's taking mm -hmm. place. That's what we should spend the rest of this call talking about is the actual land grab, the opportunities. Yeah, no, I think that's huge, you know, cause I think too many, too many people, right. Like, especially in the real estate investment space, right. It's so transactional, right. A lot, especially if you're wholesaling or fix and flipping, right. It's super transactional. And like, to your point, like a lot of people is, you know, the next deal covers, you know, these expenses, you know, the next deal covers, you know, increasing our marketing. Right. Like and so that's huge to be able to teach, you know, teach businesses, especially like smaller businesses and real estate investors, you know, how to cover those expenses. Right. And to really kind of how to, you know, keep those expenses in house. And like you said, act like a bank. Um, that's awesome. So, yeah, like let's talk about that now. Like how how are you guys merging the two? Right. And like, what's the land grab that we're that we're looking at? So let me describe the problem again. Mm -hmm. uh, and what we figured out is that. Um, so by learning all this stuff and, you know, I went I went deep down the rabbit hole <laughs> learning all this stuff, clearly. <laughs> yeah. Um, and through that process, I've met a, what I call uh, the crypto cowboys. OK, mm -hmm. crypto cowboys are the guys who have turned one of my close friends that's how I got into this because he called me up one day. He's like, dude, I just turned 50 grand into a half a million, half a million dollars like in the last two weeks. I'm like, this is interesting. I'm listening. Yeah. Earlier this year, there was a lot of that going on. 
There was. And so yeah. uh, I have to also recognize that it's fairly taboo to, to speak like that in the real estate community because people immediately think you're gambling and that it's just a moonshot, pump and dumps, all these things. Hopefully right. by the end of this call, I will uh, dispel those those beliefs, right? But point is, is he called me up. That 50 grand that turned into 500,000 turned into 40 million mm. six months later. Not too he's, bad. He's No, not too bad. He's one of... Yeah. Many people who have seen that myself, I've not seen that quite that level of success, mm-hmm. but I've had multiple, multiple X's, let's just say in the last mm-hmm. couple of years. And a lot of these people now are sitting on so much capital. It's new money, right? Mm-hmm. And they don't know how to get it out of crypto and into anything real. Right. Right. They're what we call their downshift. So what happens when these coins pump? They don't have, they're not going to pull chips off the table and just stick it in cash. Right. They're not going to do that. Especially with crypto too, because a big thing about crypto, right, is the decentralization, right? And that's exactly a lot of the people that are heavy into crypto don't like banks. No. So they want to invest in something. The real, the real downshift that they have right now is like large caps, like Bitcoin or ETH, right? Something like that. But again, they don't... (laughs) And it's it was made perfectly apparent when when Steve Trang and I were having conversations with these guys and it became perfectly apparent. They don't know anything about real estate. Mm -hmm. They don't know. Like we talk about the four wealth drivers of real estate, cash flow, loan, pay down, appreciation, depreciation, like the tax benefits, all the reasons why we get into real estate as real estate investors. We understand those things. They don't know any of that. And so we started educating them. Mm -hmm. Hey. They, what their biggest concern was like, I don't want to lock my money up. Right. And we have to change that mindset from locking their money up to locking in their financial certainty, locking in their wealth. And it's like we, we say all the time in that community, it's like bridging new money with old man assets. Like, yeah, yeah. These guys get some old man assets. <laughs> That's true, though. It is. You know, and it, it's true because like a lot of the I mean, I don't know. I don't know the same people, you know, right. But I, I know I have a few good friends of mine too, that are, I mean, heavy in crypto and I mean, they made a, a buck. Right. And like you said, like a lot of them are new, right. A lot of them are new. They don't know what to do with it now, you know? And that's kind of like the, like you said, like that's their hesitation and downshift now is it's like, cool. They, you know, they rode the wave and they, they made a good amount of money, but now what? Yeah. You know, well, and- what happens when it's on its way up and it's ripping. And yeah. you want to take profit, but yeah. there's no good options, right? Yeah. Like, they don't have very many good options. And so this concept of, well, wait a second. We have the real estate. Mm-hmm. How do we make it so that, because the process right now would be, hey, take that coin, either mm-hmm. borrow against it or sell it, move it back to Coinbase, then wire it to my bank account. I'll put it in my fund. Will will it'll spit off cash flow, which I'll then send back to your bank account, and then you can put that back through Coinbase and then buy back it. into your wallet. Yeah, <laughs> and they're like, dude, I don't know. Lost like, steps. Yeah, you lost me. Right? Like, I'm I'm good. I'm just gonna keep playing on this side of the fence. And that's a lot of transaction fees too in, in the process, right? Good point. Yeah. yeah, a lot of transaction fees, and so the the concept of real estate tokenization is that we just need to to shorten that gap. Mm-hmm. Right, because the crypto people they want to buy real estate, but they don't want to deal with toilets, they don't want to deal with tenants, they yep. don't want to deal with fixing roofs or capital expenses. They just want to have a token that kicks them off cash flow or comes with some value. Mm-hmm. So we're just gonna try to create an opportunity where you know people buy shares or stocks in a company. Mm-hmm. You could buy tokens in a real estate asset. Typically, we're talking about funds or syndications. Right. Now, are you guys going to be targeting more like single family, multifamily development deals? What's kind of the target market for like for something like that? That's a really good question. Um, and if you don't know, that's completely fine. Yeah, I, I do know what okay. we're doing is as the I'm going to I'm going to talk a little bit about the whale club at a certain. Yeah, point. yeah. What the whale club is, is we're, we're bridging the world, these two worlds together, right? So Mm -hmm. 
through my relationships at Collective Genius and Family Mastermind and all these other groups that I'm a part of, I'm sure you're members of all sorts of different groups as well, right? I have exposure to single family fund operators, multifamily fund operators, storage units, industrial properties, like right. the list goes on, single fa- uh, uh, short term rental fund operators. Mm-hmm. So, you know, imagine you're a crypto investor and you can go on to a marketplace. And you can buy into a single family rental fund in the Southeast, or you could buy into luxury Airbnbs in Miami beach, or you could buy into a multifamily in Dallas or an industrial property in the Northeast. You get the idea. Mm -hmm. The point is if we can create a marketplace where your bridge. Okay. So I give this example all the time. What was, what was the difference between Microsoft Excel who was an p- absolute powerhouse. They dominated that industry for 20 right. years, right? And then, and then Google, Google came out and was like, hey, yeah. here's Google Sheets. Yeah. It's identical almost, right? The, down to the logo. The format is the same. The user interface is almost identical. Now there's some small differences, right? To avoid right. patent infringement. Yep. But the point is, is like they created the same product with one small difference. It's the ease of use is better. Well, it's on the internet. Yeah. You don't have to download this file and send it to you and you got to rename it and then yeah. send it back to me and I'll download it. So the point was they took something that already existed and just made one small change to it. That's really what innovation is going to take right now. And so the the products already exist. Fundrise, mm-hmm. uh, uh, GoFundMe, these crowdfunding sources, these places where you can go on and buy fractional ownership in these different products they already right. exist all yeah. we're doing is taking the fundrise model and putting it on blockchain that's it we're just making right. it so that the crypto people can the use the currency that they have yeah right yeah and i think that a lot of that just comes back to comfortability right because you know your typical real estate investors they're fine going on and you know going onto a platform and you know sending cash over to something right but like you know like you said like the crypto people they want to stay on what they know Right. They want to stay on the blockchain because they like the idea of the blockchain. You know, I, and I think there's a huge benefit there. Um, did you see where um, I think it was Roofstock just sold the first house as an NFT? Yeah. That's so, wild. so so it's it's happening like a lot of these yeah. big organizations. You think they're just going to come out and tell you like, hey, these are all the things that we're doing. Exactly. They're positioning themselves just like we're trying to do with folks inside the well club. We are trying to position ourselves. And that's why I say it's a land grab. You know, I have this image of like men on horses in the wild west days, just riding out and slamming stakes into the ground. Like this is mine and this is mine and this is mine. Uh, that's what's going on right now. Yeah. No, I, I, and I, and it's, it's funny too, because as the more we talk about it, right, the more I see it, right. Um, because like when we first talked about this at, you know, CG a couple weeks ago, right. I had heard about it, but not too, not too much. Right. And I think a lot of it too comes, you know, with the simple fact of like what you focus on, you're going to, you're going to notice. Right. And so like, ever since we talked about that, you know, I'll be scrolling through Facebook or LinkedIn or, you know, Instagram or whatever, and I'll start seeing articles and I'll be like, oh shit, that's exactly what we talked about. Right. Like with the, you know, the, um, uh, roof stock thing. Um, never would I have ever noticed that before. Mm-hmm. Right. But ne- since we had that conversation, I was like, oh, damn, like there's a huge market for this. Right. And I think what you guys are doing our market, right. There's a trillion dollars. In oh, crypto. yeah. Well, I don't even think, I think there's, I think it's uncapped, man. I think the market for that is just uncapped. Um, you know, and, and that's where it's like, what you're saying is, is so true. Like bridging the gap between the two with the, the, blockchain guys, the crypto guys and the real estate. Um, because like you said, man, there's so many people out there that are super familiar with blockchain, but there's also so many people out there that don't know anything about real estate. Well, and, and so this education back and forth. So, you know, what we're doing is part of educating the crypto people who are coming in is like, we have to teach them about real estate. We right. have to, they're not going to go on bigger pockets, Austin. Like, no. <laughs> they're not going to learn from Brandon Turner and Pace Morby. They don't know these people. They don't trust these right. people. Right. So, you know, what's so powerful about what we've got is one of our partners, his name's Nick Peterson. He's got a massive 
project in the crypto world um, with, with, with tons of, you know, accredited crypto investors who were sitting right there. Right. Mm -hmm. So all we're doing is, is making it free for these people to join our right. community, learn everything they need to know about real estate because they, they need real estate. They have a massive problem. Yeah. Problem. And they need to lock in some of these old man assets. It's just been proven over time. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so if we can educate that market and create a, a trust and an authority as a central place, right? Well, then it opens up all the lines for any real estate investor who wants to tap into a completely untapped trillion dollar market. Mm -hmm. Now, let me ask you that on the real estate side, right? So on the real estate side, um, would you be buying these assets from investors or would you guys have your internal team going after them or would it just be as an operator, right? As like a, as like a fund operator. So, so what, what we're trying to do is we're trying to create the future leaders in the space. What I mean by that is I don't want to own the fund. Mm -hmm. I want to create the marketplace right. for the different real estate investors. We'll create the market. Amazon. Well, yeah. So I want to, yeah. exactly. That's a good way yeah. of saying it. I want to create the marketplace like Amazon where you've got buyers who want to buy the things and then you've got the sellers who have all the things to sell. Right. So, right. It was just like, oh my God, the, the real estate investors already have these products. So mm -hmm. Pete Cavanaugh, I don't know if you got to meet Pete. He's a single family operator uh, in CG. He operates out of Augusta, Georgia. He's got a single family fund. Mm -hmm. We are working on tokenizing that right now. Right. Right. So that he can sell his product to the crypto world. My role is to, to facilitate all of this happening. That's what we're trying to create in the whale club is right. the education back and forth. The real estate people educating the crypto investors, why they should own real estate, the crypto investors educating the real estate people, how to make a kill yeah. <laughs> crypto uh -huh. safely and reliably, right? That back and forth exchange of value results in a marketplace where the crypto people can sell their products, the real estate people can sell their products. And we just want to be the conduit to that. As I say, the bridge across the two worlds. Right. No. And I think that's huge, man. Cause I mean, you look at some of the, the most successful companies in the world right now. Right. And all they are is exactly what you just said. They're marketplaces, right? Uber doesn't own any cars. Yeah. Amazon. I mean, now they sell products. Right. Um, but I mean, 90% of Amazon's products are sold by resellers, right? Third party sellers. So I think that's huge because, you know, there's a huge, obviously the concept's proven, right? The marketplace concept works. You've got multiple business. Airbnb doesn't own houses, you know? So I think that's massive, man. Um, so how are, how is the, how is the process then for like tokenizing an asset, right? Is it like shares of a company? Um, is that essentially kind of how it, how it breaks down or? Yep. So there's, there's two things that you have to understand the difference between. Mm -hmm. First is an NFT. Right. Okay? Everybody hears this term and they use it to describe everything, which is <laughs> fine, which is fine because I understand that yeah. what I want to be as an early adopter, as an innovator is I always want to be technically correct. Mm -hmm. right? But that's not how people understand things. Who gives a shit if it's technically correct? Right. Right. They just want to know it. You yeah. just want to understand the concept. So, but let me describe for you the difference between an, an NFT which is something that represents a something unique, mm -hmm. right? So um, if I was to sell like what Roofstock did, they sell an entire house. That house individually in and of itself is entirely unique. So if right. I wanted to sell a house, then I would do, I would use an NFT. If I wanted to sell shares in mm -hmm. a house, when I chop those shares up into small pieces, they're no longer unique. Right. They're identical. So like, do you really care which $20 bill you have? No, you don't. $20 bill is a $20 bill. Do you Spend care which stock you own in Apple or Tesla or wherever? No. One stock is one stock is one stock. Mm -hmm. So that would not be an NFT. That would be what's called a security token. Okay. So we're, we're actually creating a security when you do uh, shares, right? And there's a whole process for that. You can't just right. go creating shares in, in things without going through the regulatory process. That is illegal and it will land you in jail. <laughs> uh, 
So we have to be careful when we use those terms. I know when people say NFTs, they might be referring to an, a unique representation of something. They may also be referring to shares or tokens in a real estate fund. Right. But two different things. So what we have to do is we would take, let's say you've got a $10 million fund, right? Mm -hmm. um, you could tokenize 50% of that. You could tokenize the whole uh, 10 million. Let's say we wanted to tokenize the entire fund. That means you would define the intervals. So like each token is a thousand bucks or 10,000 bucks or X, right? right? Right. And you can buy however many tokens that you want. Okay. And so uh, up to however many tokens are created. And this is just kind of gets into, well, this is the specifics of each fund and it's different flavors, right? right. Funds that you want to invest in. Um, that's how it's done. In the same way you create a fund, that's mm -hmm. so like I give this example all the time. A dollar is represented on a piece of paper. A stable coin is represented digitally. It's the same exact thing. Just one's paper right. one's digital. Well, that's the same thing we're doing with a fund. Normally, you would get an allocation that would be represented on a piece of paper. Right. We're just doing it on blockchain because it's much easier to keep track of all that stuff and to manage it and to issue it. You just get a you just get a transaction hash like it's just digital. Versus right. paper. And typically probably, a, I would say a lot faster too, right? So much more, so much faster, so much more efficient. Right. Um, like the accounting side of it is so much more uh, simplified because it's all run through what we call a smart contract. Right. So like, how would that work, right? With the, with the token. So, you know, say you buy a token that's worth, uh, it's a $10,000, you know, $10,000 token, right? That's their interval. Um you know, with most funds, and if people aren't familiar with that, it, with funds, right, typically funds are going to offer a, pref a preferred return to their investors, right? So let's say it's got a pref of eight, right? Eight percent. How with the token, right? How is that pref accounted for? Is it same way? Same way. Same exact way. It's just paid out individually each token on the blockchain. Yeah, this is why I love it. I love the Microsoft Excel Google Sheets example because it's like... Yeah. Oh, no, do the exact same thing you were doing, except now you just don't have to download the file and send it back. Just send me this link and we can edit it right there. Like, now you don't have to go and send the wire. It just automatically accounts for it. Yeah. So technically what would happen is you would buy a token mm -hmm. and, you know, maybe we give like three or four options of coins that we'll accept. Right. And we have I was telling you about uh, Dan, who's got, uh, you know, Microsoft and one of the top uh, accounting firms in the country. We have a really close relationship with a bank, mm -hmm. uh, Tigo Trust. You have to have a bank to be able to do this, right? Because we have to convert the digital currency to fiat. We still trade in fiat right. in the real world. So you have to convert that. And then the process would be the same. All it is is just an easier user interface for the customer. That's it. Right. We'll handle everything on the back end. And it all functions the exact same way. You give me money either in physical dollars or in digital currency, which we transfer into physical dollars and then we do the thing, right? Right. No, that's killer, man. Cause like, like you said, right. With the, with the old school way, right. And there's nothing wrong with it. Um, but you know, with the old school way, right. They've got to sign the document then they've got to confirm the wire. They've got to send the wire. They've got to, you know, then the fund has to receive the wire. And then, you know, it's, it's kind of like a constant, you know, back and forth, right. Then they've got to go out, deploy the deploy the capital. Um, and then, you know, depending on the fund, right, they pay out monthly, quarterly or yearly. Um, you know, there's there's so many different variables that go into the old school way. Right. Mm -hmm. um, you got to have a, a, a right on par, right on point accounting department to make sure that you know your returns are calculated properly and, you know, all that. Um, so talk about that a little bit about like the smart contracts. Right. Because um, those I think. They've been around for a while, right? But mm -hmm. they just got popular when the whole, you know, NFT e explosion happened, mm -hmm. you know, earlier. Um, so kind of like explain, you know, the smart contract and kind of like how that, you know, applies to this. Yeah. What a smart contract is, is essentially just a computer program, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, on a computer, right? We have the hardware, it's the plastic and the metal and the wires and the tubes, all those things. But then it has to have a software that it runs on, what it uses to make decisions, mm -hmm. right? 
that's what a smart contract does. It's just taking, uh, for those that are in computer science, it's just an if then statement. If right. this happens, then do this, else do this, right? We're just taking a computer program and putting it on blockchain. Mm -hmm. so that it's programmed to do a certain thing. And again, the benefit of being on blockchain is it can't be changed. It's totally public. It's completely transparent. Right. Okay? So when it when you register this contract on a computer or on on your, you know, uh, on your computer, it's it, it can be changed. You can go in and you can manipulate it. Mm -hmm. Right. But when you record something on blockchain, it's there. It's there forever. Right. Uh, the specified amount of time. So we can make use of that as real estate investors or fund operators because, hey, you want um, when you receive money, then do this mm -hmm. and then do this and then do this. And then when we receive revenue, here's how it's going to be split. I mean, it's like, well, we understand that from a computer program. That's what a smart contract does. Yep. And so it's just taking a computer program and putting it on blockchain. That's how I think about it. Yeah. And I think to, to, I mean, even further, like dumb it down for people, it's just an automation. Yeah. Bingo. Right? Just automation. It, like, it, like, cause I mean, I, that's a, that's a, that's a buzzword, right? So many people in business talk about automations, right? Yep. And like, if you don't under, if you didn't understand a lick of what he just said, some people won't and it's fine. Right. But essentially the smart contract is the automation that disperses the funding. Yeah. Right. It does exactly. it for you. Yeah. Right. And in, like he said, without the opportunity of being changed. Right. Um, so I think legally, I think that helps a lot of people, mm -hmm. especially when you're talking about upwards of, you know, millions of dollars that you're raising from people, you know, I think liability and legally wise, and I could be completely wrong, right. And correct me if I am, but I think liability and legally wise, I think there's a lot less, I don't want to say less risk, but I think your risk is a lot more streamlined. Well, what you're referring to is really where I spend most of my time, yeah. which is <laughs> trying to understand the compliance side of it, trying right. to understand the, 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 the application. Okay, that's cool. If we can't figure out how it's useful and how to apply it, it's just technology for technology's sake. Mm -hmm. And so we still have a lot to figure out. It's still so early. Right. Um, and this is where we get a lot of collective momentum by having my incentive to educate as many people as possible is to have more smart eyeballs looking at the problem. Yeah. <laughs> Educated people looking at it because we will figure this out. Right. The more collective momentum we can build, the faster we'll figure it out. Mm-hmm. No, I think that's huge too, right? Because I think so many people are so tunnel vision on like, I got to figure it out. You know, like I got to be the one that figures this out. So I think what you're doing is massive, right? I think that's huge to, you know, to recognize that more people looking at this, educated people looking at this is going to help us get to the solution a lot faster. Mm -hmm. Right. I think that that transfers to almost anything, right? Whether that's a, that's real estate, whether that's anything, right? E-commerce, you, you name it, right? The more smart people, educated people you have looking at a problem, the faster it's going to get fixed, hands down. Yep. And so on top of doing the research and finding these people, you know, I'm spending a lot of time reaching out to the technology leaders in the space, mm -hmm. the, uh, the truly the innovators in the space, the compliance leaders, the attorneys, you know, and trying to bring those people and their and their presentations and their resources. And we have, you know, when I get off this call, I got our whale call where mm -hmm. we're going to be talking more about that. Last week, we had a company, for example, called DigiShares. They are uh, one of the leaders in this tokenization space, how to turn assets into tokens that people can buy and sell. Um, so, again, where I see like my biggest my biggest value to the group is by as the leader reaching out to all these people, pulling these resources in and then educating our right. group. Hey, by the way, here's someone who could do this for you. Here's the compliance people. We've got the bank. We've got the attorney. We've got all these tools and resources so that we can provide the education. And oh, by the way, here's everything you need mm -hmm. in order to actually create this useful product. And here's the market that we're curating with all the real uh, the crypto investors who are just sitting there waiting 
dying. Deploy capital. Yeah. <laughs> buy these things. They just, they want them. And so um, that's, that's, yeah, that's the exciting part. That's the land grab, man. Yeah. That's awesome, man. So talk a little bit more about the whale club. Talk a little bit more about that. So it's, it's really, it's a community of in real estate investors that are, that are working to solve this problem. Um, first thing we have to do is we have to cover the language barrier, right? So we have, we have a lot of people who come in and they absolutely know nothing about blockchain. And those are my favorite people because I, I love um, being able to show someone who knows absolutely nothing about blockchain over the course of about six to eight weeks. There's a learning curve. Don't get me wrong. It's pretty steep. Right. But what we've done is we've made what took me about six months to really like learn all this stuff. And, you know, I collected a bunch of uh, scars and kicks in the shin for about, you know, a year learning all this. Right. And we've now been able to show people, well, here's how to make use of this right away. Like, mm -hmm. let's start setting up some passive income for your business so we can loosen the noose a little bit. Right. Uh, right. We're not living so day to day. We can cover our operating expenses so that we have time to focus on other things like uh, all the fun stuff that we're working on. Um, so it's really just a community for real estate investors who want to become future leaders in this space, who need the level of education that we have to, pro to, to provide and want to collaborate with other people who are talking about this. Like it's okay to talk about blockchain in our community. It's yeah. <laughs> to talk about that in a lot of these other real estate groups and masterminds and things. It's just still very taboo. Right. So, you know, for, for the crypto investor that wants to learn real estate, for the real estate investor that wants to learn crypto and be future leaders in this space, uh, that's why we, uh, people would join the Will Club. No, that's 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 killer, man. So that's it's you've taken, you know, a year's worth of struggle and figuring it out and really just condensed the learning curve for yeah. everybody. Right. And I think that's massive. You know? Yeah. So what I would say is like, First step, if you want to learn more about this, um, I've put four master classes together. So we're talking like, here's what the opportunity is. I'll take what we've talked about in this last you know 45 minutes and I break it down over the course of about four hours. Right. Mm -hmm. Here's the opportunity. Here's how it works. Here's how we're using it. Here's the applications that we see short term, midterm, far term. Here's how we're thinking about it and the principles that we use to make those good decisions. So I've tried my best to lay it out as, as clearly as I can in these master classes. Um, so you can get those at blockchainwhales.com. So that's our website. Uh, you know, you can go there. I'm not going to ask for your email address. I promise. That's not the point. The point is to educate the market actually for free, right? right. Go watch these videos and learn something, right? If you want Right below those videos is a link to join our, our community absolutely for free. So we've got how-to videos, like how to press the buttons, how to stay safe, how to download the wallets, how to do all this stuff. I have no intention to charge for any of that. That's not the point. Right. It's all free. Go learn something. Come into our community and get this education. Because, again, it's, it's not um, the power is getting more eyeballs on the problem. Right. No, I think that's... I Again, man, like I've said this a lot, but like there's such a huge impact there by creating a community, creating this, you know, education platform completely for free. Right. But the biggest thing is because you've recognized that by doing that, you're going to be able to solve the, the big issue so much faster. So yeah. much faster. We're not trying to step over the dollars to pick up the pennies here. It's like, look. Yeah. If you want to learn more about why people pay me to join the whale club, do it after you've watched those videos and come in and seen all the free stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's kind of the point. Uh, I give a lot of stuff away for free, but there's still people who are, you know, who are joining constantly. Right. And so the way that we approach it is not by anybody can join at any point in time. Right. We bring 12 to 15 elite investors at a certain point. I'm not going to take everybody. Mm -hmm. Right. We're trying to take the future leaders. We're trying to pour our time and our energy and resources into the people who are actually going to go do something with it. Right. So every couple of months really just depends on when I feel like doing another one. <laughs> we bring anywhere from 12 to 15 investors mm -hmm. through what we call a cohort. So it's kind of like a pledge class, right? Yeah. Like we bring you in and over the course of we've extended it now about six to eight weeks. 
and we will we will teach you everything you need to know to be an expert in earning passive income. We're going to teach you what we call the certainty operating system, which is essentially these tools and frameworks we use to be successful in crypto. And then you'll be like, oh, man, this applies to like every area of my life, business, right. investing. I'm like, yeah, that's what a good that's what a good operating system does. Right. <laughs> um, and so we just we teach people all these things by the people who taught me. So Nick and Dan and Steve Trang and myself, we're the ones teaching this. You're, you're getting to collaborate with this group of 12 to 15, you know, future leaders in this space. So that's what it looks like. But like I said, first step is blockchainwells.com. Just go consume all the free stuff, man. I'm yeah. And we'll put the link to that in the description as well. That way people can easily just, you know, find it and, and get to it. Um, so, I mean, from what I'm gathering, then you didn't just take a year's worth of, you know, knowledge and figuring it out. You've taken 25 plus years worth of blockchain knowledge in crypto knowledge and compacted it right and bundled it up grouped it up and now it's there it's available yeah right? and for people that don't grasp the how how huge that is just go look at any 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 crypto millionaire out there go look at any person like that to be doing it for this long Right. Like you, the guy that you said that taught you, right, Dan, to be doing it for this long at that level. Right. Takes a very, very, very high intellectual and high, high intellectual person, but also a very, very motivated, driven person. So to like to be surrounded by that many people all geared towards the, the same goal, that community can't really be beaten. Yeah. Have you ever noticed that some people just seem to get lucky over and over. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, we're those people. Right. And we figured out a way to engineer and manufacture a situation where we can create upside with very little downside. Yeah. And that's why uh, this certainty operating system is so powerful. That's ultimately what the real value is. Like I'll show you how to press the buttons for free. If you don't really know how to like approach this, it's mm. like handing a flamethrower to a kid. Like, like, yeah, you can make a lot of money this way, but it's also very dangerous, just like business is dangerous, just like real estate right. investing is dangerous. That's why we pay for mentors. That's why we pay for people who have been there and mm -hmm. done that, right? So talk about been there, done that, you know? It's like, and and sometimes I feel a little, um, you know, like imposter syndrome. Because <laughs> well, I learned all this from, from these guys here. And yeah. they it to me and now I'm teaching it here. So, you know, don't take my word for it. Uh, I've learned it from these guys who have been successful for decades, launching multiple businesses, helping some of the largest companies in the world execute on this. Those strategies are what helps us engineer luck in every domain. Right. That's, that's, that's why some people seem to get lucky over and over and over because they have an, a toolbox that they're using to make decisions. Yeah. You've got an operating system to generate your own luck. That's right. Yeah. No, that's huge, man. So, Paul, we're coming up right here on our on our time, man. So, what is you know what's kind of one thing you want to leave everybody with, um, and then we'll we'll sign off. Well, um, this is not for everybody, and I get that. Like where we're at in this technology, some people are going to need to to watch for a few more years. That is perfectly fine for those who are interested and in, and in taking a peek inside, kind of peeking around the corner. Just go watch these master classes. I've laid it out exactly how it works. Um, watch them. Don't watch them. I don't care. Right. We're not trying to attract everybody here. It's mm -hmm. just the people who see the opportunity and want to be a part of being an early adopter in this space. So um, no sales pitch. Just go watch the free stuff. Right. If you enjoy it, take the next step. That's awesome, man. Guys, if you guys got any value out of this, guys, go follow Paul on Instagram. He you know, he's also giving a lot of value out out there. Um, and then as well, like he said, it's it's uh, blockchain dot com. Right. Yep. All right, guys, we'll put that in the description as well. Go check that out. Um, that's it for today, guys. Tune in next week for another episode. Peace. See ya.